As we think about what the future of the store is going to be, what's going to happen there, who's going to work there, uh, I wanted to reach out to experts in the field, people with experience, and people are thinking about how to improve the store experience from both the shopper experience and the employee experience. Uh, one of the persons who's really kind of popped into my radar is Ron Thurston. Ron loves retail. Ron, he's, he's proud of it. He's proud of it so much that he's written a book called Retail Pride, which is a handbook for everybody who works in retail, whether you work in corporate or whether you work on the store floor. And I thought, let's spend some time with him today to understand some of the themes that are within his book. Hey, Ron, great to have you. Thank you, Pierre. Happy to be here. Thank you. Welcome to Retail Innovation Week. Um, uh, it's an interesting time to write about stores, uh, considering that so many are either closed or uh, quiet right now. Uh, if, if, interesting timing, no? Interesting timing, although you know, very kind of long in in its works. So the, the goal was always October twenty twenty. It just happened to be you know after one of our most challenging years, you know, as I'm sure many people will speak about this year, but, you know, I've, I've been working in retail in the field, specifically leading teams, running stores, working in sales for nearly three decades. And as you, as you hear people's stories and you hear about their love of this industry and their passion for leading their teams and their customers and the product and the brands that they work for, there's an incredible amount of pride that sits out in the field that I think is af actually often unrecognized. And as I, as I worked in the industry and you several years ago started to hear this kind of retail apocalypse terms, you know, I, I actually became quite um, almost defensive of my industry. And people would say, oh, you know, you work in retail, that must be really tough. Actually, no, we love it. We love what we do. We're just working harder and working differently. So the idea of, of retail pride was let's take all of this kind of um, work and energy and leadership um, and put it all into this book that really celebrates our industry and the people that work in it and and to be proud of it because I think it's actually very unrecognized. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you looked across the, the industry, this could some sort of fundamentals that have always existed that we can take uh, and apply today, tomorrow, that's going to help us with our success? Yeah, I write in the book, kind of, I, I talk about the this three pillars of, of retail success. And the pillars are really meant to be any industry, any role. They're, they're I think, they're not specific to one part of retail. So I talk about empathy, curiosity, and focus. And and the idea of empathy is really, no matter what your role is in the store, your really purpose often is to exude empathy to everyone around you and sp specifically your customer. And you know, your ability to listen, your ability to understand what's, what they're going through, what do they need, why are they there, how are you kind of putting yourself in, in the customer's shoes, which you know, a website can't do. So there's an immediate like level of empathy that happens. And then the curiosity kicks in of like, how curious are you about the brand that you work for, the product, the history of our industry, um, your customer, your team, the list goes on of like, the more curious you are, the better you become at, at your job, the more curious you are about everything around you. And you actually become a better, a better salesperson, a better leader, um, a better conversationalist because you've spent time being curious. And focus is a, is a word that I think anyone that works in, in stores or leads stores can understand because every day something's coming at you. There's some you know, shipment coming in the back door, visual directives, someone calls out on their shift. Like there's an enormous amount of things that can throw you off of your game. And so this say, if I'm highly empathetic, I'm curious about what's happening around me and I'm asking great questions and I'm focused on what I need to accomplish. Those, you know, in kind of working side by side can actually 
um, kind of set people up for success in, in this industry. And I think actually many others, and they can sound simple, but I've received so much feedback of like, that makes sense. That's exactly what I've been trying to say. Uh, and so that, that is, um, it's been a great part of the book. And you talked about kind of leaders, there's some specific skills that uh, they should be embracing or training for today. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you um, a couple that I've that I've written about. You know, one is an optimistic attitude, and when you you think about the leaders that you either have worked for that you really have enjoyed, um, leaders that you follow, leaders that you that you read about, listen to they often have a very optimistic attitude. And it's not in lieu of not understanding what's happening today because we need to be fully aware of how our business operates, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't come with a level of optimism of if I'm, again, I'm empathetic and I'm curious, it actually can create great optimism. So those, I, I put it kind of number one of, of leadership basics is an optimistic attitude. Um, you know, one of the others that I really speak so highly about is you know, let everyone know where you stand and that what, what's important for you, what's important for the company, where, where do you sit in, in the scheme of success, what is deemed success, and that you're fully transparent about what's going on. Um, and the other one that I would just reference, um, which is where I start the book, is how do you make everyone around you feel important? And regardless of, of role, um, I talk kind of about my inspiration with my grandfather who ran a, a big construction company. He made everyone around him feel important, whether you are part-time, you know, hitting nails into a construction site, a leader, the CFO, everyone in the organization felt important to him. And I think that's a very important pillar of just retail leadership success. Yeah, uh, it's interesting how you make those connections between different sectors uh, and still see those truths. I mean, um, there's the sort of the feeling or the kind of the emotional feeling within an organization, some of those strategies. But are there any other strategies that um, can be used to kind of improve that org the organization can improve to allow the sales associates and the, the frontline staff to thrive? I would go back kind of a bit to what I just said, because when you think about the sales, the sales roles specifically in stores, we have operated brick and mortar retail in a very traditional pyramid of you know, GM, store director, store manager, whatever you want to call it at the top. I have an assistant store manager, I have an ops manager, I have a visual person, um, I have a sales team, I have an ops team. There's a very traditional structure. And what I firmly believe today and what will become even more important is the person at the top of the chain at the top of the pyramid is the sales associate it's anyone that is that is face to face with a customer today and speaking about your brand is in control of the experience of what's happening is um the probably the most memorable not probably it is the most memorable part of your brand experience is that person that is face to face with the customer. And I really do put such a significant importance on that role and, and whatever the compensation program is, commission, non-commission, whatever that is, may not even be about compensation. It's about making them feel important, celebrating what's culturally important um, and letting everyone know like you are the most important person in, in this chain from conception of store design, product design, real estate, all of this work and all of these millions of dollars that goes in, the whole thing can actually fall apart with the wrong salesperson but that, that is engaged with the customers. I completely turned it upside down and said, well, let's spend less on something else and spend more on getting the best salespeople in the industry. I appreciate the desire to improve the human touch. Today, we see a lot of technology solutions, often actually designed to assist the store associates um, or, or get the most out of them. 
Uh, I wonder whether you can comment a little bit about the use of technology in the store and especially that kind of uh, connects with the store associate experience. So there's been such incredible like, progress in this area, but I think in, in the word omni, I'm sure this week will be a really important word that's used often, but in the brick and mortar space, it's become very channelless. So you think you can, you can start on Instagram or Facebook, You've, maybe you're on the company website, maybe you're on Amazon, you're doing homework in advance. So that, that part of the technology, you are um, understanding from that website what's product that's live in store. And then maybe the in-store experience is about, I understand your purchase history. So the conversation, the curiosity is, welcome, have you been here before? Oh my gosh, great, I'm so happy that you've been. Let me just take a quick look and see what you've purchased before. Oh, great, Grana, like I see that you love this. Let me show you what just came in. So technology can actually very much enhance the curiosity part of the pillar I speak about. And then you know things like live shopping, which has become so such an important part of this. Um, all the follow up that then happens after is very technology enhanced. You know all of the conversion sh shopper behavior that can be tracked. It's all to really support the customer experience and the the fun and the joy is not removed because of technology. And that I think was a conversation that was happening of removing the salesperson and installing. Touch, touching, touching the mirror or, you know, that everything became self-service. And I would actually say, empower the salesperson with the best technology that enhances the experience and enhances your brand. And it doesn't mean that it has to cost a fortune, uh, but your, your sales team will appreciate it and the experience will be even better. Yeah, I think that's one of the themes that's coming through in the conference today is this idea of, you know, not seeing the, or not, Use getting the the store to compete with the e-commerce portal or website. You know, it has that, it has its own purpose, and don't try to to uh, compete against that and, and lean into what what rich aspects you can on differentiated aspects that the store can offer. Exactly, and the the customer has an expectation that it's all integrated. If you can't pull it from the website, you can't get it to her pretty quickly. Um, all the all the channels have to work seamlessly together because that's how we shop today. And so that, that, that experience that's part of it that can be sales led is all can be technology enhanced. And that's yeah. actually fine. There's great things coming. Um, that's where my curiosity comes of like, how else can we integrate this? How can we make this better? How can we make this better for the customer and the brand? Uh, and that, it's, that's so much fun that's happening. You seem to have given so many tips about uh, how to think about this uh, as we close and we think about the next 12, 18 months. If, um, we have an audience of retailers, we have an audience of brand manufacturers and everybody else in the ecosystem. Is there anything, any takeaway uh, or, or thing they can nuggets or something they can use uh, or, um, to think about the next, the, the next few months? So I, I would just encourage everyone to not diminish the pride that's happening in stores, even when business is tough, and that they are working to the best of their ability. They are very happy to be here. And that often, you know, those of us that sit in offices and aren't in stores every day, don't forget that everyone that's out in the field and engaging with store teams, um, when they can act you know, in, a, in a way that, you know, behaviorally like they used to, they love what they do and celebrate them. And that's where your business happens. It's where the best of your brand happens is in stores. And don't forget um, that they are the most important people in your company. That's great. So if you want to know where the best of, well, how to make the best of your brand come to life, I recommend that you uh, buy Ron Thurston's book, Retail Pride, uh, your best marketplace, your best bookstore. Ron, thank you so much for sharing some of your thoughts today and sharing some of the ideas in your book. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great conference.